Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Well, welcome everyone to our online service from a different place. I'm looking a bit more spruced up than normal. I'm recording this on Saturday, the day before you read this. You can see it's a little bit windy, um, but we're here to celebrate with Jess and we're here to join her as she is priested or made priest in the Church of England. What a really special day this is. A bit later in this service, you will hear Jess uh, speak about her calling and how God called her to this place and what amazing things he's done. It's just a very special 10 minutes of video and time together. So shall we pray as we begin. God, our Father, we do thank you for this day, this special celebration. We thank you for Jess we thank you for her ministry among us and we thank you that you have called her to be a priest in the church. So Lord, we pray for a blessing upon her in this special weekend for her. We pray for ourselves as we discern your calling on our lives. We pray Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So shall we sing together our first hymn.
first reading is Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 to 5. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious and honoured in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Luke 19, 1 to 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up to him and said, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This week I'd like to share a little of my journey as I celebrate being made priest and presiding at my First Communion. I can honestly say that growing up it never occurred to me that being a priest was a path I would take. From the age of five I was very confident that I wanted to be a teacher. Uh, a teacher was indeed what I became and about 10 years ago I found myself married to Jonathan. Michael was about five years old. I had a steady job teaching but feeling that there was maybe something more and so I considered training and applying to be a head teacher. But by April 2012, I found myself in a very different place. I'd had a mental health breakdown. I left my job and I'd been off, signed off work for four months with a prescription for antidepressants and for counselling. Despite it being a dark place, it was a time when I felt God was with me. I couldn't pray, but uh, I had no words. But I found that listening to worship music helped immensely. They often expressed that thing which I was unable to articulate and to say. During this time, knowing that I didn't feel quite like I was the whole me and knowing that something needed to change to get well, I began to ask God what was my purpose. I had this overwhelming feeling that there was more I was supposed to be doing, places I was supposed to be exploring. But the problem was that I had such low self-esteem, I couldn't imagine what that might be. We decided to take a motorhome family holiday to the Outer Hebrides. There was a tea room for sale, perhaps wondering if relocation there might be the solution. It was an amazing holiday, a place of real beauty and a place of the presence of God. Whilst we were on the Isle of Lewis, I took a wander to explore the chapel in Europe. It's the most northwesterly chapel in the UK. No electric, no water, sound familiar? No lighting, but full of the tangible, lingering presence of God. As I sat in the chapel in the dusk and sobbed, I looked up at the window above the altar and it says this, there's a photo of it, Christ be our light. And I felt God say that he had more for me, that I needed to stop trying to run away even here in this most remote place that I had come, he was still with me and that I needed to be ready to step out of the boat and to trust him. So over the next few years as a family, we began exploring what that might be. We considered being missionaries. We began to think about where we might live. I began an online theology um, qualification, still not really knowing where it would all lead, but knowing that God definitely had something. Then in 2016, as I was exploring what chaplaincy might involve, a chance remark from a very unlikely source asked me, have you ever considered being a priest? 
The truth was, no, I hadn't. Why would I? I was worshipping in a free evangelical church and although I felt that God was calling me to ministry of some kind, I was sure it wasn't anything that involved me being at the front. I'd ruled myself well and truly out of that. But something about that encounter stuck. And so I began to pray about it and decided that perhaps it was time to push some doors. And if it wasn't meant to be, then God would shut those doors. So I pushed. We began to worship in an Anglican church. I was asked by the diocese to attend there for a year before they would begin to consider if I might have a vocation. A year later, I went back to the diocese, again convinced that they would shut the door. But instead, they gave me a vocations advisor, someone to talk through what I felt I was being called to, someone to pray with me, someone to explore what ministry might look like. Having pushed a few more doors and jumped a few more hoops, in 2018, I went to the National Selection Panel. I was given a conditional recommendation. The condition being that I needed to wait another year before I began training. I was thrilled to have been selected, but if I'm honest, I was crushed to have to wait another year. It meant that my training would be a year later, that I would have be a year older, and my confidence took a knock as feelings of rejection came flooding in. The door wasn't shut, but it most certainly felt like it wasn't fully open. But you know, God had a plan. And looking back, it was totally the right decision. It meant I had a year to volunteer at church on the staff team and began to build my confidence back. During that year, I herniated two discs in my back and was literally bed bound for six weeks. If I'd been at college, that would have been a real problem. My father, who I'd been estranged from for about 20 years, died. And it allowed me to work through that without having to worry about study. At the time, I felt God had let me down. I'd made myself vulnerable and put myself forward and he hadn't come through. Perhaps you can relate with that. But looking back now, I see that his timing was perfect and I can see totally his faithfulness. I began studying at St Hild College in Sheffield in 2019 and was beyond thrilled uh, when they said that I could do the Masters I'd originally planned to do in three years, I could do it in two. It meant that my ordination date would be exactly the same date as if I had got a yes and gone to training straight away. The year wait had had no impact. Studying at St Hild and the weekend residential with the monks in Murfield, being on placement at St Swithin's was a great time for me. It was a time of great growth, of great fun and a lot of hard work. But every door I pushed opened and each time I grew in confidence in my calling. In November 2020, I had an email from the diocese to say that they would like me to serve my curacy with Reverend Penny Green in South Loris and Barlings. If I'm honest, I was disappointed. I desperately wanted to stay where I was. It was comfy and familiar. But my experience told me to come and see. God hadn't got it wrong so far. So Penny and I met on a sunny but chilly day and wandered round Cherry Willingham and sat in the church and had a chat. I'd prayed as I'd driven here that I would just know. Penny and I had known each other before. She was my PE teacher at secondary school. But there was something about our conversation that day that filled me with joy and hope. And I came home and immediately said to the boys, this is it. It's a yes from me. I know this is where I am meant to be. A few tense weeks of waiting followed as I waited to see if it had been a yes from Penny. Fast forward seven months and as I stood outside Lincoln Cathedral listening to the bell t chime as we processed in to be made deacons, my mind took me back to that chapel in Europe. What a faithful God we serve. 
Nine years since I had first sensed that calling, he'd brought me faithfully through. Through the mountain tops and the valleys, through a journey of pain, of doubt, of change, of surprises, one of enduring love. I just about held it together walking down the aisle, knowing that all the eyes were on me. Here I was out of my comfort zone, up at the front, but not alone. God was surrounding me. And seeing Penny waiting at the end of the aisle with a smile was amazing. God has so many good things planned for us all. His purpose is wonderful and sharing in his ministry is my greatest joy. And so in a flash, here I find myself about to be made priest. My year as a deacon has been amazing, meeting and serving so many amazing people across our benefices, seeing what God is doing amongst his people and having the privilege of being able to join in with that. To top it off, God has blessed me beyond measure with a training incumbent who has become not only a great role model and a great ministry partner, but a special friend, someone who's seen the gifts in me and let me flourish. There is much to be thankful for. It's easy for me though. Here I am living my calling and so blessed to be doing so. But I remember what it was like to be living with that frustration of there must be more. To have those questions about God, what is it that you want me to be doing? How am I impacting this world for you? What impact are you having on me? Am I different to I was a year ago? Good pro- God promises in his word to us that he has good things for us. He has a purpose and a plan for each of our lives. For some, it will mean giving up the life you know and living a life of sacrifice and of service. For others, the stakes are not so high. I want to encourage you this morning to seek God, to ask him what it is he wants you to do. How can you serve him? There are places to go and people he wants you to meet so that you might share the good news of the gospel. We aren't meant to keep his love and his joy to ourselves. It's meant to bubble over and out of us. For many of us, we might feel that we're in the right place and serving in exactly the right way. And that is brilliant. Praise God for that. But for a few, there might be that niggle that perhaps there is something more. And I want to encourage you today to lift your eyes. Don't focus on your own limitations or weaknesses. I would never have put myself at the front or in a leadership role. But focus on Jesus. Maybe push a door or two. Throughout my vocational journey, when times got tough, the thought that kept me going was, I don't want to come to the end of my life and wonder what if to come face to face with Jesus and discover that he had had so much more planned for me if only I'd had courage. So trust in him. Trust that he has a good plan. Trust in his timing. Know that you are loved beyond measure, chosen and called to be his child. And wherever that leads you, that is always an adventure worth taking. Good morning. And we are now going to pray. And this morning, to help us pray, we're going to use some teaspoons. And we're going to do the teaspoon prayer, which is thank you, sorry, and please. So we begin with thank you. So Lord, we thank you that today is a day of celebration for us as a community. We thank you for Jess and for her heart that loves you. We thank you for our eyes that see us and feet that serve us. And we thank you, Lord, that she has ears to hear you. We 
we thank you for her confidence and boldness in stepping out in your name. And we pray for her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So now we move on to sorry. Lord God, we are sorry when we don't move our feet to serve you. When we close our ears to hear what your spirit has to say to us. Through your son, you have redeemed us. In your spirit, you have made us as your own. Help our hearts respond to your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And P, please. Please, would you be with those who are ill or hurting? Please, Lord, be with those who are sad. We name them before you now. Please be with Jess as she steps out into a new phase of her life, a new part of her journey, a new role in her ministry. Please be with us as we support her. And please, would you help us to be inspired by her action? To love you deeper and to step further and further into what you have for us. So merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we pray together the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen.
what a great day this has been and what a wonderful weekend of celebrating with Jess. And so as we leave a prayer of blessing, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God almighty, the father, the son, and the Holy spirit be with you and remain with you and everyone you love and everyone you pray for today and always. Amen.